Hey, welcome back to part three. Oh my goodness, part three. We've done all of our homework. We've found and registered an old vintage Topoquat. We grabbed and clipped elevation data. They line up with each other, which is where the magic starts happening. And now we get to play with hail shades. Hail shades, light direction, blurring, coloring, all that crazy stuff that scattered light does. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. So here we are in ArcGIS Pro with our geo-referenced vintage topo map, our clipped digital elevation model trimmed to only the extent of the paper, and then an extra clipped digital elevation model to only the extent of the map, and then dead pixels out to the edge of the paper. And I covered how to make that in part two, if you wanna check it out. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to be using a hill shade tool that I have to admit is part of an extension, either spatial analyst tools or 3D analyst tools. And I'm using those because they have the wonderful feature of being able to model shadows, which is to say shadows will spill over the edge into this paper area from these mountains. They'll spill over, they'll cast shadows. And this tool allows me to do that. If you don't have access to these tools, you can still do hill shading. You can do everything that I'm going to do except for the cast shadow part. You can still do hill shading, but you can do it in the imagery tab through a raster function. So if you open the raster functions inside the surface category, there's an option for hill shade, there's an option for slope, which I'll actually be using too. Um, and you can, you can um, create a hill shade. No problem. It's just that it's not going to cast shadows. So that's the only difference between this hill shade and the hill shade that I'll be using. Okay. I'm going to create a new layout. So I'll go to the insert tab and choose new layout and it'll be a custom page size. And I want to use a dimension that historic USGS topo quads used, which is a width of 22 inches and a height of 27 inches, typically. And it'll be portrait mode. And I'll insert my map frame here. All right, looks pretty close already, but I'm going to fine tune its position so that there's no space spilling over the edge. I'll right click this and I'll choose activate and with my right clicker clicked, I'm gonna drag toward me to zoom in very smoothly. And that is it, looks like I got it. Yes, okay. And I'll also be removing this default one pixel black border around my map frame by going into the properties, choosing display and setting that to zero pixels. Okay, now I'm just gonna start stacking up hillshade layers. So I've fired up the hillshade tool and I'm setting it's the sun angle and how low the sun is in the sky. And the result is a beautiful hillshade, which, oh no, I forgot to actually model the shadows. So with that button checked, actually, now I've got that cool effect of the map's shade spilling off the edge of the map area. Isn't that cool? So now I do a handful of these things. So I do, I'm, I'm going to do three of them, each one with a different um, sun angle, a little bit more abrupt um, sun angle. And I change the Z factor, which is the vertical exaggeration for, you know, like the dr dramaticness. And now I'm just going to play with some blend modes and see what happens. But it's a little too crisp there at the edge. So I'm going to use focal statistics from the raster functions. And I'm going to blur it. Focal statistics is an oddly named tool, but it just lets you blur things, among other things, but mainly blurring as far as I'm concerned. And then I, I change the color to uh, a white to black. So it's grayscale, but it's much smoother and blurrier. And looks a little bit more realistic because shadows that fall that distance on a little paper like this wouldn't be that crisp at the edge. So at this point, I'm I'm now taking dark, deep amber colors to a lighter 
cream color and and seeing how that looks in this environment and those that color gradient combined with the soft light hill shade really helps to kind of make this a deep rich hill shade now i'm just applying that um, focal statistic blurring to my other hill shades and applying the soft light blend mode to them as well and you get this neat stacking effect now i'm going to really bump up the blur here i wasn't happy with how abrupt that was see what a big difference that makes now it's really blurry like it like it ought to be and i'll play it, it loses my color setting so i'm rebuilding my color now i'm going to my other hill shade and i'm giving that a blur and also resetting its color to a color gradient instead of unique values so now it's going to be grayscale and I'll come up and I'm just going to tone this down a little bit with the transparency and I'm using a soft light blend mode for this and I mean honestly I'm just goofing around and riffing trying something seeing if it works if it doesn't work I change it or try it again and the name of the game when it comes to making kind of fun realistic hill shades is doing many versions of different angled hill shades and stacking them up with these blend modes you get this really cool bounced light effect and you can see it's it's starting to add up to this kind of neat somewhat plausible realistic hill shading on this little flat piece of paper okay now i'm going to do something funky this is admittedly a total hack instead of um just an outline for my neat line i'm giving it a gradient outline and i'm just kind of tapering that shadow here see what i'm doing instead of just like a blue stroke i'm giving it a black to transparent black gradient and then i give it a blend mode so here I am testing it, turning, I turn things on and off all the time to see if it's better or worse. And that just gives the edge of the map a boost, really pops it up off of the background paper. And now I'm pulling up that original um, elevation model that I had clipped from the Living Atlas terrain service, and I'm giving it a mist effect. I've got a link below to that effect a fun little simple hack where you just make low-lying areas whitish and then they fade to fully transparent white at higher elevations and i'm playing with some different blend modes to see what makes sense screen will always lighten based on um based on the lightness of the the layer and so it looks like i stuck with screen there um, sometimes just normal no blend mode looks good there now I'm going to do a slope map. So I've used the raster functions to calculate the slope and I'm tweaking this to really call out areas of steepness. Now this is, um, I've, I found this to be a really nice next level kind of add in. I'm playing with different blend modes for this steepness and overlay looks good. Okay. Yes. It does really boost the cragginess of that. So try out slope and play with the color gradients and then play with the blend modes. Now I'm just going to do a simple hill shade from the raster functions. It doesn't have to have spilling over shadows or anything. Because I want to um, just uh, do a little bit of a deepening to my hill shade again I'm just riffing I'm trying something if it looks better than it did before then I keep it if it doesn't look as good as before I get rid of it and I'm using a, an overlay here let's try that a little stark a little abrupt but when you change your color gradient maybe that'll soften things and it does I like how this gives me um, the light facing shininess of the paper 
And that's important. So I'll try a soft light blend mode that softens it a bit, but maybe a little too much, so I'll bring back my white. You know, it's this balancing act between the colors that you use and the blend modes that you use. And now I'm just highlighting the areas of direct sunlight, and that looks pretty good to me at this point. Honestly, I could just spend all day pushing and pulling things, trying things and seeing what works and iteratively, step by step, get better and better. So here I am playing with that mist layer. It was a little too strong and I'm going to pull in a little bit of a hue. So this kind of scattered green light effect as it kind of tapers off at higher elevations because nothing's ever actually fully black or ever actually fully white. Bob Ross taught me that. I was a little kid watching him paint. And here I am trying out some different blend modes on those original blurred hill shades. And I'm trying some color. I'm pulling in some hue. I'm, I'm bringing in some, some rich deep ambers and dark reds and maroons for the shadows instead of just a black playing with hues alongside the hill shade is, I mean, it's great fun, honestly. So I'm liking this neat line, um, but I feel like it's maybe not quite strong enough. So I'm going to go into the symbology and I'm going to add another version of that shadow, just bigger and deeper and bolder. And I also want to contrast that with an edge of the paper like maybe the sunlight is catching on the edge of the map a little bit above where it's casting a shadow that just gives it a nice little bit of um, highlight literally highlight so I'm, I'm lighting the crisp edge of that raised abruptly raised portion of the paper where the map begins Ooh, this is kind of cool so we've got the shadow playing with that white edge and I'm using a blend mode there so it's so a little bit softer and I doubled it so it was cool I liked it I made a copy of that neat line and pasted it and it looked better so now I've got two of them that's how it goes having fun okay now you're gonna see me add a little hack because I just can't help myself I'm adding in a graphic a circle graphic and I'm gonna give it a little kind of glowy effect because bing, isn't that just a charming little little glow effect I love it I can't help it why not make a copy of this and paste it in a couple little spots in the map where maybe a, a rugged edge of the mountain is catching the light hitting it a little bit it brings a little bit of I don't know, fun dimensionality to the map. Man, I love, this is a cool thing. Good idea, Scott Reinhardt. Good idea, thank you. I honor you and your cool idea. I'm bringing in one more hill shade here. Looks like maybe I could, I wanna add a little bit more crispness and bring in a little bit more um, depth to the dark areas and light to the higher areas. See the difference there? It's almost plasticine almost where it's bouncing off and pulling in very subtle hues here so it's fading into a greenish shadow and the white kind of fades into a yellowish highlight. Weird little stuff man. It's just stacked up fun. Now I'm gonna export this. Here is my result. Okay, you want to try something crazy? If we go back to our map, and actually, I haven't tried this yet, so I'm just as curious as you are. Can we 
go to the, gosh, what is it? The view tab. I can convert this 2D map into a local scene. That's like a two and a half D scene. It's 3D, but it doesn't have like a vanishing point in the distance. So let's see what happens. Okay, two and a half D. Check it out. Pretty fun. Uh, it can be more fun. Do you know how? Right now it's just using a service that knows the true elevation of the world at various scales. But we can uncheck that and then only use the elevation from the map. I'm just going to drag that in there and we'll see what happens. This is, that is very interesting. Very cool. Um, let's boost its vertical exaggeration. So I'll choose ground. And then in the appearance tab, I can say, make it five times the truth. Five, t this elevation is so amazing. It's five times the truth. Yikes, okay, never mind. Let's. That's fun though. Let's dial this back to 2x. Cool. Well, that was a fun um, inadvertent discovery. You make a map in 2D and you've also got it in 3D if you want. And that is it. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy map adventure. All three parts. Whoa, holy moly. I hope you give this a shot. I learned a lot along the way. And I want to thank Scott Reinhardt once more for the great idea of breathing new digital life into these beautiful vintage topo maps. Happy mapping.